hello everyone so uh, today we are going to discuss about a uh, types of steel so there are uh, mainly four types of steels are present carbon steel second one is alloy steel third one is tool steel fourth one is stainless steel so before going to uh, discuss about these uh, these four types of steel first slightly introduction of steel and how steel is made steel is an alloy of iron and carbon containing less than 2% carbon 1% manganese and a small amount of silicon phosphorus sulfur and oxygen it is the world most important engineering and construction material it is used in every aspects of our lives in cars in construction product in refrigerators in washing machine in cargo ships in surgical scars in surgical this needles uh, in oil tankers in in space application everywhere this steel is used in 2021 last year total 1950.5 metric ton steel is produced so four leading countries are china india japan and fourth one is usa so half of the steel is produced by china only now we are going to discuss about iron iron carbide phase diagram so in this phase diagram we can see that uh, this what kind of uh, phases are present in steel in cast iron so in y axis we have a temperature in x axis we have a carbon percent so from 0 to 0 uh, to 6.67 percent carbon at this uh, phase diagram is described so from here we can see that 0 to 2 point per 2.1 this is known as steel and from 2.12 here this called as cast iron and again in steel it is again categorized in three types based on the microstructure so first one is hypoeutectoid steel hypoeutectoid steel it has carbon percentage from 0.02 to 0.8 8 percent carbon second one is u tectoid steel it has carbon percentage of 0.8 percent third one is hyper u tectoid hyper u tectoid steel it has carbon percentage from 0.8 percent to 2.1 percent carbon so this is what known as 0.8% so this side is known as hypo and this side is known as hyper and another main thing in this iron carbon phase diagram is invariant reaction so there are three invariant reaction present so first one is eutectoid reaction second one is eutectic reaction third one is peritectic reaction so in this eutectoid reaction one phase that is known as gamma converted into alpha plus fe3c so gamma is austenite alpha is ferrite and fe3 is cementite in second one eutectic in this uh, in this eutectic liquid changes into gamma plus fe3c on cooling similar here on cooling also so this gamma is again austenite fe3 is cementite in peritectic one liquid plus one uh, solid phase that is known as delta ferrite changes into austenite on cooling so this happening at 0.8% carbon this happening at 4.3% carbon and this happening at 0.17% carbon so these are the three most important uh, reaction we should remember this these three see and some important phases as 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 we discussed this is alpha ferrite which is having bcc phase uh, this bcc crystal structure austenite having fcc crystal structure delta ferrite having again bcc structure this is high temperature uh, this bcc phase and then we have a cementite which is um, this which is having fe3c which is having orthorhombic crystal structure so these are the few important thing we should remember in this one but again this steel is from 0 to 
2.1 percent and again it is uh, it is categorized in three types hypoeutectoid steel eutectoid steel and hyperutectoid steel how steel is made steel is produced via two main routes so first one is the blast furnace basic oxygen furnace route that is known as bfcof route second one is electric arc furnace route eaf route so this is the schematic diagram of uh, uh, this basic oxygen furnace route in which uh, we pour uh, generally pig iron that came from uh, that will come from this uh, blast furnace and then plus uh, scrap and then plus uh, this oxygen O2 so this oxygen will go and uh, in uh, in this uh, pig iron we have impurities like silicon carbon manganese and phosphorus so these are four things and uh, this oxidized in, uh, uh, in this with this oxygen and it forms slag and then we can uh, get this pure steel from this basic oxygen furnace so this is also known as basic oxygen furnace and sometimes this is known as ld furnace ld converter you can call it as ld converter so this uh, second one is electric arc furnace here eaf so in this eaf uh, we can generally uh, use uh, this uh, uh, sponge iron that is uh, produced from a uh, dri waste uh, this processes so sponge iron and also we can use 100% uh, scraps we can use for uh, this this producing molten steel from there so so this is how uh, this electric arc furnace so when you see this in this uh, uh, in this chart so it it shows uh, uh, it shows you the complete a uh, picture of steel plants so it start from here so this part is blast furnace so in which the this uh, this raw material is hematite fe2o3 plus coke plus limestone and sometime we have, uh, we also use quartz and also we use center and pellets so these are the few things we use as a raw material here so this is uh, this blast furnace uh, will uh, give you the this a uh, peak iron that is also known as this molten iron and plus slag so this peak iron will go into basic oxygen furnace and sometime if you want to make this a uh, cast iron so it it will go to this a pig iron a casting and here we can uh, this produce cast iron sometime but most of the this pig iron will go into the this a basic oxygen furnace and here we also i uh, use this scrap that is a recycled steel and then we produce this this molten steel and then it goes into this secondary steel making uh, this process steel refining a facility like we have uh, this a vacuum arc degassing ead process and also we have rh degasser so in this we can uh, this uh, prepare uh, the type of steel we wanted if, uh, if we want to uh, uh, do this alloying in this molten steel and also if we want to remove the hydrogen content or nitrogen content so all these things have happen in this secondary steel making process and then it goes to the continuous Uh, this uh, this continuous casting facility and after that it will produce slab thin slab bloom and billet and from that we prepare uh, this wire or or we want rod or we want rail so this this whatever uh, the product means we want we can produce from here the second route is here you, we have and so this dri direct reduction facility and there are a various Uh, this kind of a dri is there like rotary kiln or uh, this midrex process so all these uses this natural gas as a this uh, this reducing agent and it used directly iron ore and coal and everything we can use in this dri process it produces sponge iron and that sponge iron can go into the electric arc furnace are 100% uh, this scrap we can uh, this using this eaf and then again this uh, this uh, this same process it goes into the secondary steel making and from then again this uh, this continuous casting facility and again it produces slab thin slab and the same process will repeat so this is how steel is made 
now i'll come to the main topic of our uh, uh, of of this video the types of steel so there are mainly four types of steel as we discussed the in the earlier uh, uh, in the first uh, slide so the first one is a carbon steel second one is alloy steel third one is stainless steel and fourth one is tool steel so i will discuss now uh, this uh, all four types of steel one by one so first one is carbon steel so carbon steels are categorized in three categories first one is low carbon steel uh, and also it's uh, this known as this mild steel it contains carbon content typically 0.04 to 0.25% second one is medium carbon steel and it has a carbon range of 0.25 to 0.60 third one is high carbon steel that has a carbon content from 0.61 to 1.25% now you can see here so this uh, a low carbon steel shows a property of low hardness low cost high ductility high toughness high machinability high weldability and these are the few examples of low carbon steel so in this next video i will we this going to uh, discuss about how we can uh, name this kind of steel like aisi 304 so so this what is the this meaning of uh, i mean how can we read this uh, uh, steel this steel uh, steel this designation so we will be uh, discussing this in next uh, uh, in this next video so this medium carbon steel has shows a low hardenability and this medium strength medium ductility and medium toughness and some examples are ai si 409 astm 8 and cm435 and then we have a high carbon steel in which it shows high hardness high strength and low ductility some examples are ai si 4406 and also it is showing a micro structure but again this micro structure is depending on the cooling rate what cooling rate uh, we are this dealing with uh, if it is uh, you know, this high cooling rate so in that case this martensite side will form and if it is a low cooling rate in that case this perlite will form if it is in this medium cooling rate in that uh, in some case it will form this uh, bainite will form so this thing uh, we will be uh, this uh, this discussing in a uh, heat treatment videos in upcoming uh, in a in upcoming videos now the application of carbon steel so there are uh, this uh, this several application of uh, this uh, this carbon steel so for this low carbon steel it is often used in automobile body component structural shapes like i beam channel angle iron pipes construction and this bridge component food canes and this uh, medium carbon steel is used in mainly in railway tracks so all the railway tracks what you are seeing that are made up of medium carbon steel train wheels crank shafts gear and machinery parts these are manufactured by medium carbon steel and then we have a high carbon steel uh, that is mainly used in cutting tools springs high strength wires and dies now come to the second part uh, this uh, second type that is alloy steel so this alloy steels are uh, uh, it contains alloying element like manganese silicon nickel titanium copper chromium and aluminum and uh, in varying uh, this proportion in order to manipulate the steel's property so whatever the steel uh, this property like hardenability corrosion resistance strength permeability weldability ductility uh, this be required so uh, based on that we can uh, change the composition of alloying element and we can get the property so the alloy steels are categorized into two parts the first one is low alloy steel it contains alloying element up to 8% the second one is high alloy steel it contains more than 8% alloying element now this alloying so there are around 20 alloying elements in the periodic table that can be added to carbon steel to produce various grades of alloy steel so here are the few examples we are we this discussing here so some alloying element like aluminum it can rid steel of phosphorus and sulfur and oxygen so the second one is uh, this uh, this chromium it can increase the this toughness hardness wear resistance and also it can increase the this uh, corrosion resistance third one is uh, this uh, this copper it can increase the corrosion resistance and hardness in the steel fourth one is manganese it can increase high temperature resistance wear resistance ductility and hardenability fifth one is nickel it can increase corrosion oxidation resistance and and strength as well Uh, silicon it can increase the this magnetism and strength tungsten can increase the strength and hardness 
सो दिस अबेनेडियम इट कैन इंक्रीज दिस कोरोजन असॉक रेजिस्टेंस स्ट्रेंथ एंड टफनेस सो द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एलॉय स्टील सो जनरली दिस एलॉय स्टील्स आर यूज इन एज ए फॉर्म ऑफ एलॉय स्टील पाइप एंड ट्यू प्लेट सीट क्वाइल बार्स रॉड एंड वायर ऑल्सो दिस पोस्ट फिटिंग्स बट बेल्ट फिटिंग्स लेंजेस फास्टनर्स एंड मैनी मोड Alloy steels have a several application in various industries like automobiles, mining, machinery, and equipment, railways, road construction, buildings, appliances, and offshore applications. Third one is the tool steel. So this tool steel contain uh, alloying element like tungsten, molybdenum, cobalt, and vanadium in varying quantity to increase the heat resistance and durability, making them ideal for cutting and drilling equipments. So basically, this uh, tool steel is categorized in cold work tool steel. hard work tool steel and high speed tool steel so the major application of tool steels are in the following processes like forming stamping cutting and searing of plastics and metals extrusion of plastic section like a vinyl window frames and pipes stamping of computer parts from metal sheets slitting of steel coils into strips dies for compacting of powder metal into forms of such as gears the fourth and final one is stainless steel so as a stainless steel it means it has a minimum 10 to 11% of chromium uh, in uh, in, uh, in the steel and generally it contain a 10 to 20% chromium as the main alloying element and are valued for high corrosion resistance so with over 11% chromium steel is about 200 times more resistance to corrosion than mild steel and there are five types of stainless steel first one is the ferritic stainless steel second one is austenitic stainless steel martensitic stainless steel uh, this precipitate hardening stainless steel and duplex stainless steel so this ferritic stainless steel uh, contain chromium content from 10.5% to 27% uh, this chromium and uh, austenitic stainless steel contain generally 18 point uh, this 18% chromium and 8% uh, this nickel it contains and martensitic stainless, uh, stainless steel contain 12 to 15% this uh, chromium and up to 1% molybdenum and similarly this uh, precipitation uh, uh, in this the uh, like the, uh, the chromium content is also from 11 to 18% and this duplex uh, uh, steel as it is named that uh, chromium and this uh, molybdenum this Uh, chromium is up to 22% to 25% and molybdenum is up to 5% so and also the these microstructures of these things are uh, means different uh, this like in, uh, in this duplex steel we have 50% ferrite and 50% martensite so like that we have so these are the things of labor now come to the application of stainless steel so the first one is austenitic stainless steel it used in automotive trim a cookware a food and beverage equipment industrial equipment second one is uh, this ferritic stainless steel it used in household units a kitchenware valves exhaust system this washing machine water tanks heat exchangers water heater boilers now this martensitic stainless steel uh, it used in a cutlery steam and gas turbine blades bushings dental and surgical instrument uh, this measuring instruments ball bearing gauge blocks molds and dies a precipitation hardening stainless steel using gear bulbs and other engine components high strength of turbine blade molding dies a nuclear based cask this is the important thing where this precipitation hardening stainless steel used a duplex stainless steel used in different industries like chemical process petrochemical oil gas pharmaceutical geothermal sea water wa- water desalination lng biomass mining utilities uh, nuclear power solar power so, so these are the few application of stainless steel and uh, we will make one a separate video of stainless steel in which uh, uh, we will be uh, this going to uh, discuss about a uh, different aspects of microstructure and how it is correlated with the final uh, application and mechanical properties so thank you so much for watching this video and stay connected and keep watching please like share and subscribe our channel and uh, if you have any comments please uh, uh, please uh, this message us on on this instagram and our instagram id is at the rate metallurgical 
अंडर स्कोर इंजीनियरिंग